Hey, my name is Paul Halliday, and today we're going to look at using Ionic 3 and the Estimo Location Beacons. To connect to our beacons, we're going to be using the Eddystone Bluetooth protocol. This is an open protocol that's supported both on iOS and on Android. iBeacon is another communication protocol that the beacons can talk to, but that is officially only supported on iOS. We're going to be creating a cross-platform mobile application using the Ionic framework. This is primarily using Angular and Cordova. To get started with Ionic, I have a video on that already and we install all of the dependencies. I've got a link to that in the description, so if you want to get started using cross-platform mobile technologies, follow that video first and then come back to this one. We can then run Ionic Start. By running Ionic Start, we can create a new Ionic project. We're greeted with this web page that allows us to create an app name, a directory name, as well as an app ID. In this section of the Estimo Location Beacon series, we'll simply be connecting to our beacons, so we won't need anything complex. I'm going to call the app My Estimote, and for the app ID, I'm going to add com.pwh.myapp. Now you can call this whatever you want, and it obviously has to be a unique bundle identifier if you were to put this on the store. At this moment in time, we're not looking at producing our app for the store, we're simply looking at connecting the app to the beacons. So the next thing we we'll want to do is select a template. I'm going to select the blank template, as I don't think we'll need a side menu at this point, and we certainly won't need any tabs. Then I'm going to press continue, this will create the application and we can check the terminal and you can see within the terminal that it's installing the packages and creating a new app at the location of users, Paul Dev, my estimate. This can be different for you, obviously, and it'll be based on the blank template. It does say that it's creating an Ionic 2.x app, but that actually is creating an Ionic 3 app. We can then either launch our app from the user interface or run Ionic Lab from within the command line. This opens up our application in a mobile view. You'll notice that we have the iOS, Android, and Windows options. If you don't have these already, you'll have to tick the platforms at the top right of the screen. So I've got iPhone, Android, and Windows ticked. For now, let's just tick Android, so we have one app in the middle. And then we'll go onto the Estimate Cloud. Inside of the Estimate Cloud, we can enable Eddystone for our Estimote location beacons. So over at cloud.estimote.com, you should have a list of beacons. I'm going to select the beetroot beacon. And from within this beacon, I've enabled Eddystone UID, Eddystone URL. I've also given it a URL. I've enabled TLM, and I've also enabled telemetry. As well as being able to edit this from the website, you can also edit from the mobile application on the App Store. To edit the information about your beacon inside of the Estimate Cloud, ensure to scroll back to the top and click Edit Settings. From here, you can change everything from the name of your beacon to enabling stuff like Eddystone UID, URL, and so on. Like I said, I've got all the Eddystone stuff enabled, and I suggest that you enable it too, as we'll be using the Eddystone protocol within this series. Now that we've set up our beacons, you can test them on a mobile device using the app. And if everything works as expected, for example, you can see the beacons on the app and you can connect to them, let's now make an app that connects to those beacons. So at this stage in the process, we're going to keep the implementation quite basic and then in future videos, we'll expand on this topic more and more as we get more comfortable using the Eddystone protocol. I like to use Visual Studio Code for this, so ensure that you open the project up. I'm going to use Code Dot. Once you've done that, you should have your project open in your editor. From here, we can head to our homepage under Source, Pages, Home. HTML. This is the view for our homepage. So we'll change this to Eddie Stone Estimate Beacons. Let's save the file and instead of the text inside of the iron content, 
let's simply add a div with the paragraph tag of placeholder. If we look back inside of our application, we can see the new title for the homepage as well as some content inside of our app. If we wanted to, we could change the color of the navbar by saying color primary and that would make the navbar blue. The next thing that we have to do is install the Cordova plugin for Eddystone. So if you head over to your command line, you can run Cordova plugin add and then it's Cordova dash plugin dash Eddystone. By using dash dash save that will also commit the plugin information to config.xml and we can take a look at that. If we click config.xml here, we can see that the Cordova plugin Eddystone has been added to our project. In future implementations of this, we'll transfer this logic to a service. But for now, let's simply do it inside of our homepage. So inside of the div inside of our ion content, we can make an ion card. Now the ion card will have an ion card header and inside the header, we'll have start scan. So this is the point in the application where we want the user to manually start the scan. By doing it this way, it allows us to test our application and we can basically go from a point where we're not scanning at all to scanning for beacons. Inside of the ion cards content, perhaps you can add a little paragraph tag, which simply says something like, click the start scan button to scan for beacons. You can be as creative as you want at this point. Then underneath our paragraph, we'll have a button and we'll add the ion dash button attribute. That'll give us styling as far as iOS, Windows Phone and Android. And the button can have a click event. By putting it in the brackets here, we can attach it to an event within Angular. So the click event will be start scanning for beacons. Feel free to shorten this method if you want, but at this point in time, I want to be as explanatory as possible. So inside of the button, we'll simply have the text scan and we can save that file. If we take a look inside of our view now, we have start scan, click the scan button to scan for beacons. So the idea is if the user clicks this button, we should of course start scanning for beacons. If we click it right now, we find out that it's not a function. So let's write that function. Inside of our home.ts, we can write start scanning for beacons. And it's usually a good idea to ensure that the platform is ready before we start making any native calls to the device. So this means we need to import the platform from Ionic Angular, and we also need to inject it inside of our constructor. So let's do private platform, and then let's say platform. This allows us to then say this.platform.ready and this returns a promise. So let's say dot then. So when the platform is ready, we can start scanning for beacons. Now, because there isn't at this moment in time in April the 20th, 2017, there's no Ionic native wrapper for Eddystone. So we have to use Cordova. So in order to use Cordova without having any TypeScript errors, we can add to our declarations.d.ts, we can add declare var Cordova of type any. If we save that file, we can then use Cordova in here without any issues. After we've ensured that the device can actually make some native calls, we then need to scan for beacons. Now to scan for beacons, we need to use something called the evil things Cordova plugin. Now to use the evil things plugin inside of our home.ts, we'll have to add it to our declarations.d.ts. If we didn't, otherwise we'd get some type issues with TypeScript and we wouldn't be able to build our project. So let's say declare var evil things of type any. Now it's not usually a good idea to declare things as any, but as we don't have an Ionic native wrapper for this plugin at the moment, or any TypeScript wrapper, we have to deal with it by using declare var evil things any, and you'll see why in a second. So ensuring that the platform is ready, we can then say evil things dot eddystone dot start scan. And this is going to return us back some beacon data. 
and then after that, we can simply log out the beacon data to the console. So this will start scanning for beacons, and if it finds any beacons, it will log it out to the console. So it's fairly self-explanatory at this point. We are then going to check to see whether there are any errors, and if there are any errors, we're going to simply say console.error and pass in the error message. So right now, we're waiting for the platform to be ready. Then we're using the Cordova plugin that we installed to start scanning for beacons. We're then taking the beacon data and logging it out to the console. If there are any errors, we're going to log the errors to the console as well. We're not going to do anything with them at this point, but we will in the future. So let's take a look at this on the device. So to first run this on the device, ensure that you've got the Android SDK installed if you want to run this on Android and ensure that you have the iOS SDK installed by using Xcode and you're on a Mac if you want to run this on iOS. I'm going to run this on Android, so I'm going to add this to Ionic Platform Add Android. That will add the Android platform to the project. As you can see, it installs all the plugins on the platform. So then we can run Ionic, run Android, and I'm going to use dash L. Dash L starts a live reload server similar to the lab on the device itself. If we change any of the codes here on of our project, we'll find that it instantly updates it on the device. We get an error at the moment that our address is in use, which means we just need to quickly terminate the Ionic lab commands by using control C. And then if we start the live reload server again on the device, we'll see it on the device. So everything is loaded on my device, but you can't currently see it on the screen. Let's rectify that. By using chrome colon slash slash inspect, we can pull up the developer tools for the device. You can then see what I'm seeing on my screen. It's not an emulator, but you're simply seeing what I see on the screen. So if we click scan, we find out that nothing happens. And that's because we have to give the device the location. So if we press allow, we then start to see these addresses coming in. Now these addresses are being pulled and each time they're being pulled, we're getting the results for them addresses. If we click one of these addresses, you can see that we get the address for the beacon. We also get the URL, stuff like the temperature, the RSSI, and much more. This allows us to get stuff like the metadata from the beacon, as well as the data that I can push out with the URL here. Now we don't simply have to send people to a particular address. We can also push sensor data and health data and a variety of other stuff that you can think that would be good for contextual usage. Now the sky is the limit as far as actually displaying things inside of this URL here. One thing I did actually notice is that there's a limit to how much bytes you can send across from the beacon itself. So you can't put a massive address in there, which is why it's a really good idea to shrink the address using bit.ly. Anyway, we're sort of getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here, but you can see that we're getting the results from the beacons. If we head back inside of our home.html, we no longer want to display this information about starting the scan because the scan has already started. So now we can use a structural directive from Angular 4 using ngif else. So let's add that. Let's add the asterisk ngif is equal to, and for that, we'll need to say if the beacon data does not exist, we'll display this card but if the beacon data does exist, we'll instead show the beacon data. So let's now add a beacon data. And for now, we're gonna be horrible and put this as an any. You should probably make a type for this in production and we will make a type as time goes on, but for now, we'll simply leave it as an any. I'm going to refactor the beacon data from here and I'm simply gonna call it data so we can understand a little bit more and don't get confused as to where things are actually being put. We can now say this.beaconData is equal to the data that we receive back from the scan. Then inside of our home.html, we can say ng if, and if there's no beacon data, we'll show this card. We can add a semicolon at the end of that. And then we can say else. So the else is going to be a different template. So we can add a template using ng-template. 
And inside of the template, we want to instead display the beacon data. It would be a really good idea to put this into its own components, and we should and will in future videos. For now, it's just about implementation, so let's have an ion card. And inside of the card, we'll have the ion card header once again. But this time, there will be some information and metadata about the beacons themselves. Inside of the ion card content, we'll also have some data about the beacons. For now, we'll simply just say beacon found. And let's have a paragraph tag, and inside the paragraph tag, we'll say yay, because we've found a beacon. Let's check that everything works. So what we need to do at this point is then give our ng template what is known as a template variable. We can say with the hashtag beacon found. So what we're essentially saying now is if there's no beacon data, we are going to show this card. But if there is beacon data, we can show beacon found. Let's now run our scan again. So I'm going to click scan. And before we do that, I'm actually going to console.log the beacon data. So now we're logging out the results to the console. If we click the scan button, you can see scanning is already in progress because I clicked it twice. But you can now see the results of the scan. So we're getting this data back, but you'll notice we're still displaying the old template. Now, if you know anything about Angular, then you know we've got the beacon data. We're logging out the beacon data itself. So that it, there definitely is something in the beacon data. And inside of our NGF, we've got a pretty sound filter at this point. We're saying if there's no beacon data, we show this, else show the other template. So why is this happening? This is happening because the change detection is not actually being picked up within Angular. So instead, we have to import change detector ref from Angular core. We have to inject this. So we'll do private change, change detector ref inside of our constructor. And instead, we want to update the UI at a particular interval. So let's, for example, every, we'll call it one second, we will instead say this.change dot detect changes, and we'll put that in a timeout of one second. So every one second, we'll detect for any changes. So let's have a look in the application once again, now that we've implemented that change detector reference. So if we start again from scratch, we're going to click scan. And now we see we have a beacon found, and it's been updated because that beacon data has now been shown within Angular. So inside of our home.html, like I said, we can refactor this. But at this stage in time, let's simply make an ion list. And inside of the ion list, we'll have an ion item. This ion item will be bound to beacon data dot and then let's pick some stuff that we might want to bind to the UI. Some examples could be the address. So let's say beacon data dot address. We can add another thing. So using ion item once again, we could perhaps add the temperature. We could add other things such as the beacon data dot RSSI. We could go down the list and we could add a variety of other things from the plugin. But for now, I also want to add a button. So the button is yet again going to add the ion button attributes. And when we click the button, it's going to take us to that URL. You can add as much beacon metadata as you want. I'm going to add the URL now. So we can make an anchor tag. And for the href, we can bind to the beacon data dot URL. And for now, I'll simply add URL to the text of the anchor tag. So when the user clicks this URL, it should, if everything has worked correctly, open up my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C slash Paul Halliday. So if everything's done right, it should work. Let's save this. And let's take it for a spin again. So I'm going to open up the developer tools and click the scan button. So clicking the scan button right now. And then we get a list of addresses. So at the moment, our UI is not the prettiest, but we're displaying the address of the beacon, we're displaying the temperature and the signal strength. If I move my phone closer to the beacon, the signal strength gets better. And if I move it further away, you can see that we start to drop to the 70s. We could update the UI slower or quicker than this, depending on how much we want to pull the beacons. 
We could simply find the beacon, get the data, then stop the scan. But for now, let's check to see whether our bit.ly and data URL is working. Let's click the URL. So you'll not be able to see on my screen, but you can see that the tab has gone inactive and we have the link to my channel. So we've demonstrated that we can connect to the Estimo location beacons using the Eddystone protocol. We've also looked at how we can implement that inside of our Angular and Ionic applications. At the moment, our code is fairly simple, and that's intentional. We have a simple scan function. We're ensuring that the platform is ready so that we don't have any errors and break our application. We're then starting the scan for the beacons. We're assigning the beacon data to a variable, and then we're checking for any changes. In the next video in this series, let's refactor this code, put it in a service, and of course, start building a little bit more complex implementation around an actual use case within the application. So if you're looking to connect your estimate location beacons using the Eddystone protocol, I hope that this has helped you in understanding that. And until the next video in the series, my name is Paul Halliday, and I'll see you very, very soon.